Hello there, this is Miss Nakayama, continuing with allergies. Um, today's lesson is SS3, Geometric Sequences and Series. So in our last lessons, we talked about arithmetic sequences and series. So now we are talking geometric. So that means that we are not going to have a common difference, but a common ratio denoted with the letter R. A sub 1 is still our first term, and A sub n is the nth term. So this is the formula that we're going to be working with to find terms in a sequence or to write a formula to represent the sequence. So in our first example, Shira receives a joke in an email that asks her to forward it to four of her friends. She forwards it, and then each of her friends forwards it to four of their friends, and so on. If the pattern continues, how many people will receive the email on the ninth round of forwarding? So one of the things you've got to pay attention to is how many were forwarded in the first round. Got to make sure you know what that first term is. So she got it. That means that the first round of forwarding is when she sent it to four people. And then if each of those four people sent it to four people, that would be 16 and then so forth and so on. Multiplying by four every time. So if I put 16 over four, then I find that R is equal to 4. Okay? So, if the pattern continues, how many people will receive the email on the ninth round of forwarding? So, yes, you could just keep going, but sometimes you'll be asked to do something that is not that easy just to keep going. So, I'm going to do it with the formula. We've got A sub N equals A sub 1 times R to the N minus 1. So, my nth term should have been... Well, I'm going to write the general formula first. A sub 1 is 4, and my R is 4. So that's the general formula. So if I'm looking for the ninth term, A sub 9 is going to be 4 times 4 to the 9 minus 1. And when you plug that in your handy-dandy calculator, you're going to get 262,144 people. All right, look at example 2. Write an equation for the nth term of each geometric sequence. So it says write an equation. That means we're going to put something together like this. And we have to find a distinctive A sub 1 and R for each of our problems. When we did this for arithmetic, y'all, we found A sub 1 and we found D. Okay? But, so, well, we'll just keep going. So write an equation. My first term, of course, is negative 0 0.25. And how do I find any term as I take one and put it over the one that comes before it? So you can do 2 over negative 2.5, but you can also do negative 16 over 2, which is a little bit easier because a lot of people mess up if they're going to stop. Mess up if they put 2 over a fraction or a decimal, but you'll have a calculator. So negative 16 over 2 gives me r equals negative 8. So my formula, a sub n, my a sub 1 is negative 0 0.25, and my r is negative 1, and that's it. You leave it just like that. Okay, look at 2b. a sub 3 equals 16, and r equals 4. Okay, y'all, I still have to write something like this, so i got to go find out what a sub 1 and r are. So if you know a sub 3 a sub 3 is equal to a sub 1 times r to the 3 minus 1. So what is a sub 3 in this problem? It's 16. a sub 1 is what I'm looking for. They told me r was 4, and 3 minus 1 is 2. So when I 4 squared is 16, 16 divided by 16 is 1, so a sub 1 is 1. And that gives me a formula. a sub n is 1 times 4 to the n minus 1. And that's all it is. Just finding those pieces of information and plugging into the formula and making sure that you know you need A sub 1 and R to be able to write that formula. All right, look at example 3. We did this before with arithmetic means. Find four geometric means between these two numbers. So what we did is we wrote down two numbers, 0 0.5, and then I put a blank. I'm going to have four blanks with commas. So blank, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then I have 512, okay? And what we did before is we took 512 and subtracted 
but this time we're on geometric, so I'm not going to subtract. I'm still going this way, but I'm going to put 512 over that first term, and that's going to equal r to the, and this is where people get messed up, okay? How many times did I have to use r? I used it once, twice, three times, four times, five times to get to that term. So it is r to the fifth. 512 divided by 0.5 is 1024. And when you take the fifth root of both sides, you find out that r is equal to 4. So that means I'm going to multiply 0.5 times r. Mm, I didn't come out right. 0.5 times r, which is 4. So 0.5 times r. Yeah. 0.5 times 4 is 2. Times 4 is 8. Times 2 is 32 times, I'm not, y'all, it's times four. Clearly struggling here. Times four, times four, times four. 32 times four is 128, and 128 times four is 512. So I know that I've done it correctly. And those are my four geometric means. Okay, partial sum of a geometric series. Y'all need to know that it can be written in lots of different ways. So S sub N is a sub 1 minus a sub 1 r to the n over 1 minus r. Um, I actually like to factor that one out and only write the a sub 1 once. And then I have it in parentheses 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. People tend to struggle calculating this, so I like this one better. But if you know the last term, this is a different one. And this one says s sub n equals a sub 1 minus a sub n times r over 1 minus r. So that one's not, if I know the last term, that one's not such a bad one to, to do. But if I have to calculate the last term, which is kind of what that is, I'd rather do it like this. I only want to take the r to the n, not the whole thing. Stop that. Okay, so find the sum of each geometric series. Okay, so my sum formula is a sub 1 times 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. Okay, they give me a sub 1 equals 2, and r is equal to 3, and I know s is 10. I mean, excuse me, n is 10, so that means s sub 10, a sub 1, 2, r is 3 raised to the 10, because that's what n is, and that's going to be 1 over, excuse me, 1 minus 3, because 3 is my r value. Y'all need to put this in your calculator right now. Pause it. Make sure you can do it correctly. Don't just go flying through this video and say, oh, yeah, I know how to do this. Okay? Because my answer is 59,048. But you got to be able to use that calculator. All right. Look at 4B. 4B is an example where they actually gave me the last term. So this time I'm going to use that formula. I don't know why that keeps happening. So... My formula is S sub n equals A sub 1 minus A sub n r to the n over 1 minus r. It's not, yeah, that's not, that n is not there, y'all. I don't know why I put that in there. Take that away. Okay, it's just r. I was going to say you don't do that twice. Okay, so um, what is my n? I don't know what my n is. I don't have to know what my n is because I know what everything else is in the formula. So S sub n, A sub 1 is 2,000. A sub n is 125. And R is 1 half. So again, you should pause, put it in your calculator, and make sure you can do that correctly. And you should get 3,875. Okay. Find each sum. We talked about this last time. Okay, this summation notation. And y'all, if you don't recognize, you're, these are going to get all mixed up when you have a quiz. This is S3. Your quiz goes S1 to SS1 to SS3. But they're going to be mixed up. And if you don't recognize this general A sub N equals A sub 1 times R to the N minus 1. So that's what this looks like. There's, that looks like A sub 1 R to the N minus 1. A sub 1. Okay, so it looks like this. And I'm telling you that just because that is looking like a geometric sequence. Okay? However, you got to pay attention to what this thing says when you're finding the sum. Because remember, you could just go plug in 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, all the way to 12, and add all those up. But it might take you a long time, and you might still mess up. 
All right, so my formula that I'm going to use is a sub s of n equals a sub 1, 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. So what is n? I've talked to you all about this. Remember, it's not just 12 minus 4. n is 12 minus 4 plus 1. So n in this case is going to be 9, s sub 9. Okay, now a sub 1 means I'm plugging in k equal to 4. So that's going to be, a sub 1 is going to be 1 fourth times 3 to the 4 minus 1, and that becomes 27 over 4. So that's my a sub 1. Don't think that it's just this right here just because it looks like that. You have to pay attention to this index down here. Okay, r is still 3, so that's going to be 3 to the ninth and then minus 3. Again, put that in your calculator and make sure you can do that correctly. S of n equals 66,426.75. Okay, one more sum. This time we have the sum as k equals 2 to 9 of 2 thirds times 4 to the k minus 1. Again, this looks very similar to that. We talked about how the arithmetic one looks linear in that form. So if you can recognize that, then you can use these formulas. But if it's not arithmetic or geometric, you can't use these formulas. You just have to write out the terms and add them up. Okay, so again, S sub n. How do you learn the formulas? Write them down every time you do a problem. So S sub n equals A sub 1 times 1 minus R to the n over 1 minus R. What is n? n is 9 minus 2 plus 1, which is 8. So I'm looking for s sub 8. a sub 1 is when k is equal to 2. So that's a sub 1 is equal to 2 thirds, 4 to the 2 minus 1. And that becomes 8 thirds. So I got 8 thirds for my first term. r is 4, and that's 4 to the 8. And then r minus 1 minus r on the bottom. Again, put that in your calculator. Make sure you know how to use that properly. S of 8 equals 174, 174, 174.759 over 3. Or you can write it as a mixed number, whichever one you calculate. But you can't round in Delta Math unless it tells you to round. Okay, y'all, this last problem, um, you don't have it in the homework. It's kind of bonus worthy. It's a good thing to know how to do, but I'm not going to talk about it.